Hey guys, Kejo here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we're going to be doing a different kind of series of videos. What we're going to be doing is doing top five tips that pro players do that you're probably not doing in your solo games. These are things that they're doing in competitive games. We're going to look through the replay files of the games themselves from the player's perspective. And I'm going to talk you through why they do certain things uh, and what this achieves, whether it's getting them ahead or getting the team ahead. So these are things that you might not think about and things that you might not see on camera in pro games. But I'm going to talk you through them, talk you through the thought process of these things and how you can implement it in your solo games to help you improve and help you in the climbs. All right, let's get started with tip number one. Now, I think tip number one comes from the early game. So we're going to look at Fnatic's game against SK. And notice what Hidasang does level one. He runs straight down to bot lane, places a ward in the brush. And you'll see this happen very often in pro games because how important this brush is. You might even see five-man bots, uh, the support running and warding here. And a little bit of a crucial thing to note, Hidasang instantly swaps the sweeper. So when he comes back out into lane, just notice what he does with upset. Him and upset, they're not leashing, obviously, because they want to make sure that they can win their matchup. They control this brush with their life. And what this enables, it means you can get the push right it's so hard for the enemy support to step up and contest this brush if he puts a ward here both of them will kill it so they'll never get vision and if you just look from the perspective of sk's bot lane you'll see that hillisan keeps going into fog of war and coming out of fog of war which means that jezu has to respect it play further back treats as well which means what fanatic can do is they can control the wave and if they can control the wave then that means that they have the push and they're ready to move whenever and they're the ones who can choose the first engage Okay, so tip number two. Now, we know that we're controlling this brush. What do we want to do with this brush? We can't actually kill them because they're playing so far back. Well, what you want to do is stack a wave. So what Fnatic are doing is they're slowly last hitting the wave while also keeping a minor push. What this in turn does is that once the first wave comes in and the second wave comes in, there's a big wave stacked up and they get level two first. Very common. You get level two first in the bot lane because you have the push. But what do you do with it? I think the most important thing here to look at is most most solo queue bot lanes, especially in low reloads, they'll just push the minions in for no reason. And when they do this, the wave just crashes under the tower, and then this achieves nothing. Whereas what Fnatic do, instead of just crashing the wave and pushing it in, they stack the wave. What this means is they don't crash the third wave, they wait for it to meet the next minion wave here. And what they do is then they slowly push the third wave in again. And what this in turn does, it means you have a mega big wave under the tower. And you might ask, well, what does this achieve? Because first of all, we can't dive them. And second of all, we probably can't get plates. Well, this all comes down to how the bot lane matchup actually is in the first place. In this case, melee support into melee support, it's probably really hard to dive. Yes, if Fnatic's jungle was here and they TP'd in, they could probably force SK away. But they don't actually have the resource to do that right now. Uh, so what they're in turn going to do is they should just push in here. And what you can do with this situation is you can actually just run up the river and get a ward up here in the river. You can put a ward in tribush or you can go for a cheater recall. What Fnatic end up doing is a mistake. Hillisang tries to step up to hit the tower, eventually gets chunked out and caught and has to back off and flash. But what Fnatic could have done with the push, if you watch Upset's movement especially, was he wanted to crash the wave and then run up toward Tribush, get information on the enemy jungle, and then try to scout out the enemy jungle, which will help out self-made, which in turn just makes it so your team actually has more information to work with, so you're just winning the early game. Okay, so tip number three, you've crashed in your wave, you went for a cheetah recall like Upset did and you got two long swords, and now you're coming out onto the lane. What do you want to do? Well, time is actually the most important resource in League of Legends. I think gold is one thing, but I think vision's another, but time to me is the most important. So what Hillisang does often, and I think you should definitely do in your solo key games as a support, is when the enemy bot lane crashes a wave like this and wants to recall and wants to go back to base like Jesu does here, you hold the wave in his face. And what this in turn does means that if you hold the wave here, you're freezing the wave. Treats probably wants to knock Hillisang away to cancel him from being able to freeze it. But Hillisang's holding the wave. Jezu has to stay because he knows if this wave's frozen, he's going to lose so many creeps. So they in turn have to trade on to Hillisang to stop him from being able to freeze it. But because he held it for so long, the wave is actually frozen now. Eventually it will bounce when Upset starts to push, but for now it's frozen. And if you look across the whole map right now, if you look at all the vision, SK have just started recalling. That means Hillisang could also recall right now as well. And they'd keep the freeze and they'd come back to the lane at the same time. In this case, Hillisang has potions, so he doesn't actually base, he just hangs around and they keep the freeze. But the concept's there, right? What you want to do is make sure you stop the enemy bot lane from crashing the wave for free under your tower, which in turn means you're freezing the wave, which means they have to stay to stop you from freezing the wave. And if you can play it correctly, you can probably hold the freeze and manage to base at the same time as them. But just make sure you don't die, make sure you don't get caught and make sure you don't actually die for it. 
Tip number four. Okay, your wave's bouncing in bot lane. Means that you have more creeps enemy, and the enemy you want to crash the wave on the tower. And if you're a fanatic right now, you're kind of scared of enemy jungle, right? If Graves comes through lane, or he's standing here, or he comes around the tri bush, it's going to be really hard for you to get this wave under the tower. Because if you try to push it in and you get ganked, there's a very high chance you die, right? Upset has no flash, Hillisang has no flash. So what are the communications? Well, you can do in solo queues, you can ping your jungler. And what in turn means is that your jungler, if, if he's smart, you ping him to come towards bot, what he can do is hover around for you and give you some vision. And even sometimes push out with you. And that just makes it so you can crash the wave for free. Yes, you lose a little bit of XP. But what you do once this play is done, you crash the wave on the tower, which Fnatic makes sure happens. And then they run with their jungler to do an objective. So they run towards the dragon in this case to get a drake. So they had a stacking wave, which they could have been vulnerable on. But what they do with it is they call their jungler, they crash the wave together, and then they go to the objective together. So they all hold hands and everyone's safe and covered. Uh, and can SK really respond to this? Well, no, they have to catch the wave on the tower. And they probably have information that Fnatic have started up this Drake. So if they wanted to fight it, they might have to drop some creeps. So you'll see Treats already moving up to try and contest it. But the, the, fa the fact is that Fnatic get there earlier just because they played it well with the wave and they joined up and held hands together. Um, and they made sure that everyone was safe. Okay, so let's look at tip number five. Now, this is a, this is a different game. Fnatic is playing a different lane, but they're actually winning the lane phase. They've been calling their jungler. They've been stacking waves. Similar to last game, they're going to push in this wave. Their jungler's doing Drake. In this case, they have an Udyr who can solo it. So they're basing. Now, I think a lot of solo queue bot lanes here, uh, I think especially in low reloads, wouldn't actually commit to this swap because they don't really know how to execute it properly. But what you normally like to do, especially in competitive games and even in solo queue in high elo, when you've, you're winning bot lane and you've already taken the dragon and there's nothing for you to really do in bot lane, you can't dive them, the lane's neutralized to the point where you can't actually force plays on them, especially when you're playing things like Senna, Tam, Kench, what you want to do is just swap. Now in this case it was a lot easier for Fnatic because they could TP top with Hillisang, but what they wanted to do initially was actually swap anyway because the Herald's up, dra Dragon's dead, they're going to lose one wave bot for this, which is basically nothing in turn because what they do in turn is they push in top, they deny the enemy top laner some waves, and then your jungler already starts Herald. And you know that you can start this herald because your bot lane, being you, is already around. The enemy bot lane had to catch the wave that you pushed in earlier, and now it's already in base. So you actually have so much time around the map to get the herald, and if you can get the herald, then you can use it to get plates. So you can in turn take your winning bot lane matchup and snowball it further. So you might have to micromanage your jungler a little bit in solo queue uh, when you do these kind of plays, but this is definitely what you want to do to crack the game open when you're ahead as a bot laner. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of top fives. Uh, this time around, we did bot lane. But in the future, if you enjoy this kind of content, we can do like G2's mid lane. We could do Rogue's top lane or Wham lane. We could do Fnatic's Whippo in top lane. Or we could even do jungle. Anything like this that we can look at to maybe help you guys out in solo queue from taking competitive gameplay and plugging it into solo queue that all these pro players do. So if you want to watch the full version, of this video i did like a 40 to 50 minute breakdown of fanatic spot lane uh, in many different competitive games and how they get a lead you can click somewhere up here probably my editor might put a link uh, but yeah thank you for watching the game the video guys um, i really enjoy all the sport and i hope you're enjoying the content so yeah thank you uh, enjoy your day and peace